Ever wonder why U.S. race teams always use engines by this company in offshore powerboat racing? From the thundering Class 1 boats hitting 160 miles per hour to the nimble superstock catamarans dancing across waves, there's one name that dominates American offshore racing like no other. Here's a mind-blowing fact. In Class 1, the pinnacle of offshore racing, every single boat runs identical Mercury 1100 competition engines, pumping out 2,200 horsepower combined. But here's the twist. This wasn't always the case. What started as fierce competition between engine manufacturers has evolved into what some critics call a carefully orchestrated monopoly, where Mercury doesn't just compete in the sport, they essentially control it. And the most controversial part, many racers actually prefer it this way. Let me paint you a picture of modern offshore racing that'll make your jaw drop. Picture this, you're standing on the shore at the P1 offshore races in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, watching massive catamarans ranging from 37 to 47 feet literally fly across Lake Michigan at speeds that would make a NASCAR driver nervous. The roar is deafening, but here's the kicker. Every single one of those earth-shaking sounds comes from the same source, Mercury racing engines. Now I know what you're thinking. Come on, surely there's some variety. Well, buckle up, buttercup, because we're about to dive deep into how one company from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, has essentially become the Ford Motor Company of offshore racing. Except imagine if Ford was the only option for NASCAR. The story of Mercury's dominance isn't just about building better engines. It's about strategic partnerships, spec racing rules, and yes, some good old-fashioned American business maneuvering that would make John D. Rockefeller proud. And before you think this is all doom and gloom, let me tell you something surprising. Most racers are actually thrilled about it. Let's start with the big dogs. Class 1 Offshore Racing. These are the Formula 1 cars of the water, except they're the size of a small yacht and pack more horsepower than three Corvettes combined. When P1 took over the worldwide rights to Class 1 Racing in October 2020, they didn't just inherit a racing series. They inherited Mercury's iron grip on the class. Every Class 1 boat and I mean every single one runs twin Mercury Racing 1100 competition engines. We're talking about 9.0-liter V8 monsters with quad cam 4 valve heads and twin turbochargers that produce 1100 horsepower each. That's 2200 horses trying to rip these boats apart at the seams. The engines are so tightly controlled that Mercury Racing literally shows up at each race with bright yellow PCM units. That's the brain of the engine for you non-gearheads, and installs data loggers to make sure nobody's been naughty and tweaked their motors. Hey, if you're loving this deep dive into the wild world of offshore racing, make sure you hit that like button and ring the bell. Because we're just getting warmed up, and trust me, the story gets even crazier. Steve Winveen from Mercury Racing put it best. The idea of Class 1 now is that winning is dependent on driving and boat setup, not on who has the most money to throw at an engine. Sounds noble, right? But here's where it gets interesting. By controlling the engines, Mercury essentially controls the sport. They decide when upgrades happen what technology gets implemented, and most importantly, they ensure that every team is buying their product. The Mercury 1100 competition is a masterpiece of engineering, don't get me wrong. The aluminium block is hand-assembled in Wisconsin, features Mercury's proprietary fuel calibration, and can run on 89-octane pump gas. Try finding another 1100 horsepower engine that'll do that. The expectation is these engines will last an entire season with just basic maintenance, which in the old days of 1850 to 2000 horsepower monsters running at 7500 RPM was about as likely as me winning the lottery while getting struck by lightning. Now, Supercat is where things get really juicy. This premier class features massive catamarans ranging from 38 to 44 feet in length. We're talking about boats the size of city buses that hit 140 miles per hour on open water. 
For decades, this was the wild west of offshore racing, where teams could run whatever 850 horsepower engines they wanted. You had sterling performance, cast racing engines, custom-built monsters from independent shops, and various other builders all duking it out. It was beautiful chaos, like a bar fight where everyone's wearing tuxedos. But then something fascinating happened. In early 2022, after what I'm sure were some very persuasive conversations, and probably a few cocktails, the Supercat team owners, including heavy hitters like John Emmons of Chariots of Fire, Chris Grant of Gradle, Tyler Miller of MCOM, Billy Mouth of WHM Motorsports, and Wayne Valder of Pro Floors Racing, voted unanimously to allow Mercury Racing 860 engines into the class. Now, allow is a funny word here, because what really happened was Mercury offered a package that was simply irresistible. The Mercury 860 is a naturally aspirated, fuel-injected powerhouse that pumps out 860 horses while running smoother than a Swiss watch. These aren't just rebadged consumer engines, either. They're purpose-built racing mills with competition-spec internals designed to take the absolute beating of offshore racing. Vinny Diorio from SV Racing, the first team to make the switch, didn't mince words. The 860s have been way more cost-effective for us. We have one set of engines that we ran all season without a problem, and we are fully expecting to get through this season on the same set of engines. Think about that for a second. In a sport where engines are used to grenading themselves faster than you could write the check for rebuilds, Mercury created motors so bulletproof that teams are running them season after season. The domino effect was swift and brutal. Once top teams switched to Mercury power, everyone else faced a choice. Join them, or get left behind watching their transoms disappear into the spray. P1 Superstock is what I like to call Mercury's gateway drug into offshore racing. But don't let that fool you. This is serious racing with serious technology. These boats measure between 28 and 32 feet, with most teams running the iconic P1 Panther hull that's become synonymous with the class. We're talking about twin sponson catamarans that hit 110 miles per hour while bouncing across waves like angry hornets. The evolution of Superstock perfectly illustrates Mercury's master plan. Until 2019, these boats ran the legendary Mercury 300 XS two-stroke outboards. Motors that screamed like banshees and required a mechanic's touch to keep happy. But then Mercury dropped a bomb. The new 300R four-stroke V8. This wasn't just an engine upgrade, it was a complete transformation of the class. The 300R features a 4.6-liter V8 that delivers a 44% increase in displacement compared to the old 300XS. That translates to what Mercury Racing's Rick Mackey calls a noticeable difference in hole shot and mid-range acceleration, particularly useful when powering out of turns. The engines rev to 6,000 RPM and produce well over 300 advertised horsepower. Some dyno tests show them pushing 350 horses when properly tuned. But here's the kicker. They run on 87-octane pump gas and meet world emission standards. Try finding another race engine that can claim that. The real genius move came when P1 converted the entire fleet to closed canopy configurations in 2019, incorporating carbon composite structures that saved a whopping 800 pounds per hull. Combined with Mercury's digital throttle and shift system and Sportmaster gear cases designed for 85 plus mile per hour operation, these boats became not just faster, but safer and more accessible to new racers. By controlling every aspect engines, hulls, and even propellers Mercury created a perfect feeder system for future Class 1 and Supercat competitors. It's brilliant, diabolical, and working exactly as planned. Factory Stock is Mercury's latest power play, and it's brilliant in its simplicity. This class requires boats to run unmodified Mercury Racing 450R outboard engines. That's right, unmodified. You can't even change the prop without getting disqualified. It's like a street race where everyone has to drive identical Honda Civics, except these Civics cost $80,000 each and go 130 miles per hour. The 450R is Mercury's halo product in the consumer outboard world. 
It's a 4.6-litre V8 that makes 450 horsepower and costs more than most people's cars. But here's the genius part. By creating a racing class around their top consumer engine, Mercury gets free R&D from racers pushing these motors to the limit, plus they get to showcase the engine's durability to potential customers watching from shore. Alright, speed demons, we're halfway through this wild ride. If you're as fascinated by this Mercury monopoly as I am, drop a comment below. Do you think spec engines make racing better or worse? And hey, while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up if you're learning something new. Now we get to the fun part, the classes where Mercury doesn't have a stranglehold. Mod V and the various bracket classes are like the underground punk rock scene of offshore racing. This is where you'll find big block Chevys built by mad scientists in their garages, pushing 700 plus horsepower through setups that would make a Mercury engineer lose sleep. Mod V has a rich history that goes back to the 1980s when it was created to give independent engine builders a fighting chance against factory teams. The rules specify a single carburetted engine with various displacement and configuration options, and boy do builders take advantage of that freedom. You've got guys like Tyler Crockett in Michigan building absolute monsters that make Mercury's refined engines look like sewing machines. The beauty of Mod V is that it's about innovation and problem solving, not just writing checks to Mercury Racing. Teams run everything from old-school big blocks with roots blowers to modern fuel-injected setups that blur the line between race engine and science experiment. One racer told me, in Mod V, your engine builder is more important than your sponsor, and that's exactly how they like it. Bracket racing takes this even further. Classes 1 through 7 are based on speed limits tracked by GPS, so it doesn't matter if you're running a worked-over Evinrude from 1985 or a brand new custom V8, as long as you stay under your bracket speed, you're legal. This creates some hilarious scenarios where a half-million dollar boat might lose to something held together with zip ties and prayers. Here's where things get spicy. Remember that story about Mercury allegedly impounding Al Stoker's engine back in the late 80s? They spent weeks trying to prove it was illegal, while their own teams were showing compression numbers that were definitely, shall we say, optimistic. It's like accusing someone of cheating at poker while you've got aces up both sleeves. The truth is, Mercury has used their financial muscle to shape offshore racing in their image. When they introduced the T4 engine years ago, instead of building enough to make it legal for competition, they went to court and argued until the motor was obsolete. When other manufacturers started winning in certain classes, Mercury would lobby to change the rules or create new spec classes where only their engines were legal. Some old-timers in the sport call it the Mercury Mafia. They control the engines, they sponsor the races, they even own the data logging systems that monitor the engines. It's vertical integration that would make Amazon jealous. One veteran racer who asked not to be named told me, Mercury doesn't want to race unless they know they're going to win. They've basically eliminated competition by making themselves the only option. But here's the plot twist. Most racers are actually okay with this. Why? Because Mercury's dominance has brought stability and affordability to a sport that used to bankrupt teams faster than you could say blown engine. In the old days, teams would spend $100,000 on engines that needed rebuilding after every race. Now a Mercury 1100 competition can last an entire season with basic maintenance. The cost per horsepower has actually gone down, even as power levels have gone up. It's like if Lamborghini suddenly started making reliable cars that only needed oil changes. Sure, you lose some exclusivity, but you gain the ability to actually drive the thing. Plus, when everyone has the same engine, it really does come down to drive a skill and boat setup. There's something pure about that. No more losing because the other guy had deeper pockets for engine development. As one class throttleman said, I'd rather lose knowing it was my fault than lose because someone outspent us on motors. So where does this leave us? Mercury Racing isn't going anywhere. If anything, they're doubling down. They're expanding into electric with their Avatar series, they're pushing into new markets internationally, and they're creating even more spec classes to showcase their engines. 
The rebel classes like Mod V will always exist for the purists and tinkerers, but the reality is that Mercury has won the war. They didn't do it by building the best engines, though they arguably have. They did it by being smarter business people than racers. Love it or hate it, when you watch offshore racing today, you're essentially watching a Mercury commercial with some turning involved. But you know what? When those Class 1 boats come screaming by at 160 miles per hour, their twin Mercury 1100 singing in perfect harmony, nobody in the crowd is complaining about engine diversity. They're too busy picking their jaws up off the ground. The story of Mercury's dominance in offshore racing is really the story of American business, innovation, strategic thinking, and yes, a healthy dose of monopolistic behavior. They've created a system where they can't lose, and somehow convinced everyone else that's a good thing. Whether you see Mercury Racing as the savior of offshore racing or the emperor who killed the Republic probably depends on whether you're cashing checks from them or writing checks to them. But one thing's for sure, as long as there are people crazy enough to strap themselves into boats powered by thousands of horsepower and race across open water, Mercury Racing will be there, bright yellow PCM in hand, ready to control every cylinder firing. So that's the inside story of Mercury's offshore racing empire. If you made it this far, you're obviously as obsessed with horsepower and controversy as I am. Hit that subscribe button and join our community of gearheads who love the stories behind the sport. Drop a comment below, are you Team Mercury or do you think the sport needs more engine diversity? And hey, check out our video on the craziest offshore racing crashes of all time, because if you're going to run Mercury power, you better know how to handle it. Until next time, keep it wide open.